Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Well, I still don't understand it, Captain. I don't imagine the War Department worries itself about what you and I think, Gorse. What I mean is it only makes plain sense that a troop of men ought to be called a troop, not a company. What's wrong with company, Sergeant? Mm, I don't know, Captain, but it kind of makes us out to be an infantry outfit, don't it? <laughs> that bothers you? I joined the cavalry, not a bunch of road builders and day laborers. I'm not sure Captain Lawson and his men would like to hear themselves called that. Well, I didn't exactly mean any disrespect to him, sir. I know any frontier post ought to have some infantry stationed on it. But I just think somebody ought to get around to changing the designation company. A good enough name during the Civil War. I guess so. Oh, cheer up, Gorse. May take them ten years, but sooner or later they'll change it. And I'll be commanding a troop instead of a company. Yes, sir. I'll be a whole heap older by 85, and I'll sure feel better about it. All right, Sergeant. Have Corporal Mercer make out some copies of this, then post one at the Sadler's shop, another at the AQM stores. Yes, sir. Captain? What is it? Looks like Lieutenant Seibert's and the men coming through the main gate now, sir. Yeah, they're about seven hours late. Oh, come on. We'll go meet him. Platoon! Oh! Prepare to dismount! Dismount! That's pretty ragged. Yes, sir. Sergeant Glasser. Take over. Dismiss the plateau. Sergeant Gorse, have Lieutenant Cybers report to the orderly room as soon as he's free. Yes, sir. Well? Captain. What is it, Gorse? Say it out. Lieutenant Cybers is awful young, and he come here straight from the point. I know that, Sergeant. You, uh... You want me to be patient with him, that it? Something like that, sir. This is Indian country, Gorse. There's not time for a man to be young. I've been patient with him for three months now. Yes, sir. But there's something else this time. What's that? His column out there is one man short. I can see the empty saddle, too, Sergeant. Just have the lieutenant report to me. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Seibert reporting the captain's order. Stand at ease, Mr. Seibertz. You've just completed a fairly routine mission, Mr. Seibertz. Is that correct? Yes, sir. If I recall, your orders were simply to take a platoon from B Company, proceed along the wagon road to Fort Collins, accept delivery of 60 remounts from Garrison Quartermaster, and return to Fort Laramie. Yes, sir. That's correct. You were to hold strictly to the route assigned, avoid all contact with Indian irregulars or any action which might provoke hostilities or reprisals. Were those your orders or not? Yes, sir. They were. Were they clear? Did you understand them? Yes, sir, but... Just I... ride to Fort Collins and bring back 60 horses. Those were your orders. Now, why didn't you carry them out? I did, sir, until circumstances changed things. Circumstances I... never change an order. The most it can do is alter the way you carry it out. All right, let's take a look at the way you carried out your orders. Sir, Up I... until last night when you bivouacked, everything had been normal. Then during the night, a band of Indians jumped you and got away with 35 head of horses. Why? Because you'd already violated one order. A standing order applying to all night camps in Indian country. To use four sentries on the picket line and four more out in the points. 
You'd only posted three altogether. We were only four hours from the fort, sir. I thought... Then you violated three more orders. You sent a detail in to the fort with the horses you had left, and you led the rest of the column in pursuit of the Indians. But, sir, In I... doing so, you left your assigned route, you made deliberate contact with the Indians, and you committed an act you knew would provoke hostilities. In fact, you did everything but tear up your orders and feed them to your mount. But they'd stolen the horses, sir, and they'd... Th th those horses had been placed in my charge. I couldn't let them get away with it. Why couldn't you? You're an officer of the United States Cavalry, Mr. Seibertz. You're not permitted the privilege of getting mad and hitting back. We've got a job to do out here, a tough one. To keep order over an area of 10,000 square miles. And to do it without men or the guns we need. I know that, sir. We're sitting on a powder keg, Lieutenant. Every minute of the day and night, and don't you ever forget it. Just because some Indian strikes a match, that gives you no excuse to light one in return. That clear? Yes, sir. You brought back an empty saddle. How did it happen? We were ambushed, sir. Private Lineley was killed in the first volley. Corporal Dean and Private Wagner were wounded. We killed two of the hostiles before withdrawing. Did you bring in Lineley's body? I'm sorry, sir. We were unable to recover it. All right, that's all, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Captain Quince... Shall I uh, expect a board of inquiry? That's up to the Major. Sir, won't he go by your recommendation? I can't be expected to cover up for every green lieutenant who comes off the point. I'll give him the facts. Without recommendation? That'll be all, Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, Captain. You can't expect to cover up for every green lieutenant who comes off the point. And I wouldn't attempt it, Major, but I still accept full responsibility for Mr. Seibert's actions. Actions? The way I hear it, uh, unofficially, of course, he simply lost his head, violated his orders. Maybe I didn't make the orders clear to him, sir. Clear to him? How could he possibly misunderstand a simple mission like that? He's young, Major. We do things different out here in the frontier. It takes a wild ease into it. We haven't got a while. He'll realize that, sir. Left his route, attacked a band of Indians, and Lord knows what else. Major Daggett, you asking me for a detailed report? Yes, of course I'm asking for... Oh, no. No, by heaven, you've already accepted responsibility. I don't want to know the details, at least not officially. Whatever you want, sir. You mean whatever you want. Confounded, Lee. You mother that troop of yours like an old hen with a flock of chicks. Yes, sir. You'll take them out in the woodshed and whale the daylights out of them yourself, but you'll be hanged if you'll ever let the neighbors find it. Yes, sir. All right, you've accepted responsibility, so I'll let it go at that. Good. Provided you also accept the responsibility for pulling us out of the fire. A band of renegades, whoever they were, have attacked a cavalry column, stolen 35 horses, and killed a trooper. If they get away with it, more Indians will jump reservation and join up with them. I think we can prevent that, Major. With your permission, I'd like to have a try at it. What'll you need? Forty picked men from B Company, a second in command, and half a dozen of the best Indian scouts at the fort. Quanto for one, Dancing Fox, and maybe Will Granby and Pete Hazen. All right. Who'll you take as your second? Peterson? No, sir. Lieutenant Seibertz. <laughs> You're handicapping yourself. I'd uh, like to move out by one o'clock. That way a forced march will put us at the site of the ambush before dark. All right, Captain Quince. Make your arrangements. Thank you, sir. Oh, and Captain. Yes, sir? Good luck. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Gores? Yes, sir? Just what do you find so funny? What? Nothing, Captain. Nothing at all.
Lieutenant Seibert's reporting, sir. We're ready to move out on order. Good. Sergeant Gorse? Yes, sir? What did the scouts say? Quanto talked with the scouts that were with the lieutenant at the ambush, sir. He's pretty sure they're a bunch of Cheyenne. Bison clan with Squaw Dog leading them. Squaw Dog. How many Braves? Around 30, sir. And Quanto thinks they won't be very far away. I agree with him. This time of year, they're not likely to go north of the Laramie Mountains or west of the Sweetwater Ridge. Ten to one, they'll hole up somewhere in the Butte country, this side of the Laramie foothills. Well, that's what Quanto thinks, too, sir. All right, Sergeant. Tell Quanto and the other scouts to move out. They can cut the sign at the side of the ambush before the column arrives. We'll be there at five. Yes, sir. Quanto, you and Will Granby move out. All right, Mr. Seibert. Post. Scouts have moved out, sir. Right, Sergeant. You, uh, get coffee this morning, Gorse? Yes, sir. I'm glad. I have a feeling it might be a spell before you get any more. Mr. Seibert? Yes, sir. You will move out with a point. Once we clear the fort, you will deploy the men as skirmishers. Yes, sir. By the column of twos left. On the guide on. Forward! Forward! Captain? What is it, Gorse? I sure do like getting out in the open air now and then. I just hope you feel that way two days from now. I think I will, sir. I think I will. Lieutenant Seibert's reporting, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. I've checked over the mount, sir, there, standing it well, all in good shape. Private Harrison's mount has a stone bruise, not serious. Fine. Uh, you uh, got a match, Seibert's? Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Sit down. Rest your feet. Thank you, sir. Captain, uh, may I ask what the plans are? Uh, we'll let the men rest here till midnight, then push on north following the river. Unless Quanto or one of the other scouts makes contact before then. And after that, sir, when we find Squad Dog and his men. No plans. At least no detailed plans. As a matter of information, Lieutenant, or instruction, as you might say, I'm... Operating under one general order. To get the horses back, punish the Indians responsible for stealing them and for killing Private Lineley, and do it without starting a blood feud. You pardon my saying it, sir. It sounds like a difficult mission. Most of the jobs the cavalry does out here are difficult, Lieutenant. In time, you'll realize that. I'm beginning to, sir. Hope so. Who goes there? Advance and be recognized. One, two, go. Captain Quince, it's Quanto, sir. Uh, over here. Any luck, Quanto? Much luck. Fine squaw dog. Where? Up river at Ponowico Fork, one mile west. Camp in Buttes. Ponowico Fork. And a forced march, we can make it before dawn. Corporal Mercer, get my horse. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Seibertz, I'm going to ride out with Quanto and get a look at him. You'll take command of the column. Yes, sir. Have the men tie down their bridle chains, muffle all equipment, stay by the river, but keep moving. Wait at the fork if I haven't rejoined you. Sergeant Gorse knows where it is. That clear now? Yes, sir. All right, Quanto, lead out. Carry on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Bugler! Sound boots and saddles. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. We'll move out in ten minutes. That's him, all right, Lieutenant. If it was anybody else, a point flanker would have stopped him. wonder what he plans to do. I just wouldn't know, sir. I never try to outguess the captain. Good officer, Sergeant Gorse. You couldn't find any better, sir. When we got a little time, I want to tell you something else about him. Made good time, Mr. Seibertz. Thank you, sir. Be full dawn about half an hour. Things are working out fine. There are about 30 of them camped in a narrow ravine between those two buttes there to the west. Luxury is with us, Captain. The ravine's about 150 yards long. Only way out's at either end. Sides are too steep to climb. So here's what we'll do. Sergeant Gorse will send four men to each of those two buttes. They'll climb on foot, take positions on the rim of the ravine, looking down on Squaw Dog's camp. Understood? Yes, sir. Lieutenant, you'll take 12 men and circle south to come up on the far side of the buttes. You'll approach on foot to establish a skirmish line to command the mouth of the ravine. It's all broken ground. There's plenty of cover. You'll have 20 minutes to get in position. That clear? Yes, sir. I'll move in, cover this end of the ravine. You'll fire at will on your own discretion as soon as you hear my guns open up. And with this point in mind... Don't kill a single Indian unless you have to, to keep from being overrun. But That's an order, Lieutenant. This whole operation is just one purpose. I want Squaw Dog to realize one thing fast, that he's trapped, and that we can kill him and every one of his braves if we so choose. After that, we'll... Well, we'll just see what happens. That clear to both of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, move out. It's 20 minutes now, Captain. Then we'll assume Seibertz is in place. All right, Sergeant. Let's wake him up. Yes, sir. Prepare to fire. Ready? Fire! Hit him again, Sergeant. Ready? Fire! At the ready, hold! Well, that ought to show him it'll be a little rough trying to come out this end. He ain't even going to try it, sir. Not one brave has shown up at the end of that ravine. There go the boys up on the rim. That'll give him something else to think about. Well, he ought to run into Sabbats down there at the far end any second now. There he goes now. We've stopped firing. <laughs> We've turned him back. Well, Gorse, I guess we can settle back now and wait. What do you figure Squaw Dog's going to do, sir? I know what I'd do. I'd hightail it out here and talk things over. You got a match, Sergeant? If Squaw Dog wishes to say something to the captain, let him get off his horse and speak the English he learned in mission school. And let him hand me his rifle. Squaw Dog, 
ask why it is white man's soldier attack peaceful hunting party. Is it possible squad dog thinks I'm a fool? All Cheyenne, no. Captain is wiser of all men. Then is it possible that Squaw Dog has lost his eyesight and gone blind? Squaw Dog sees like the eagle. Then why can't he see 35 horses in there, in that ravine, with the mark of the white man's government on their flanks? Or is it possible that some of the chief's braves have made a fool of him? A fool? Could it be that some of them have stolen horses and killed a soldier of the white man's army and Squaw Dog knows nothing about it? Could it be that they've lied to you? Told you they traded for the horses? Are you a chief, Squaw Dog? Or a fool whose men laugh at him behind his back? I am a chief. Then why are you not able to control your men? Why are they able to fool you so easily? Have you lost your authority? I am chief. If you were chief, you would identify the guilty men and punish them yourself. Why is it necessary for the white man's army to do your job for you? I do not know who does this thing. Well, I'll give you five minutes to find out. And if you can't, then we'll look for the guilty men with bullets. And a bullet has no eyes, squaw dog. It can't tell the guilty from the innocent. How many brave you say do this thing? I don't know, but one trooper was killed. I'd say it would take about four braves to kill a trooper. Squaw dog, go now. Just five minutes, and when you come out, leave the government horses in the ravine and leave your rifles there too. We do not keep rifle. You do not. It may help remind you to supervise your braves more closely in the future. Now get going. The five minutes are just about up, Captain. Yeah. He may decide to fight, but I was hoping he'd take the bait. He took the bait, Captain. Yeah. Well, it's rough justice, but it's better than a blood feud and a punitive campaign by a full regiment. Yeah, they come, sir. They're riding out. All right. Let Mr. Seibertz know he can follow him through. Yes, sir. Bugler, sound recall. Well, they probably shot the four oldest. Yeah, probably. Have Squaw Dog and his braves stand by till Lieutenant Seibertz gets here. He took part in the action. He has a right to share the surrender. Yes, sir. Guilty braves are punished. Squaw Dog is free to go now. Yes, you have my permission. Go. Oh, just one more thing, Squaw Dog. Every chief should have a rifle, but you have none. No. I will permit you to have a rifle, Squaw Dog. Here, take this one. Now. Go in peace. Peace. Bye. That bloody old reprobate. Revenge is a luxury out here on the frontier, Sergeant. Better this way in the long run. Captain... Why'd you give him back his gun? Because that gun will break his back, Lieutenant. He took that rifle off of Trooper Lionley's dead body. I saw the serial number. That made him a big man with the clans. But then we outfoxed him, forced him into a spot where he had to execute his own braves to save his skin. 
And as a final gesture of contempt, I gave him back the gun. That'll break him. It'll save lives in the long run. They'll laugh him off the reservation before the month's out, and... What's wrong, Lieutenant? I... I caught a bullet, sir. One of the Indians the other end of the ravine. It's not serious. Why didn't you get attended to? I... Well, I had direct orders to report to you at once, A sir. bullet wound's an exception, Lieutenant. Go find Corporal Grayley and get him to dress that. Yes, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yes, sir? About that board of inquiry. I... I heard about it, sir. Who from? Sergeant Gorse, sir. Gorse? Captain. He's going to do all right. He'll make a good soldier. He'll do better than that, Sergeant. He'll make a good cavalryman. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Les Crutchfield, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Joseph Cranston, and John Daner. Company, attention! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Now, a public service message from CBS Radio. In time of flood or fire or other disaster, feeling sorry for the victims is not enough in itself to help those victims resume their normal ways of life. When disaster strikes, someone must be on the spot and on the job to help. And with your support, the Red Cross will be on the job wherever and whenever emergencies arise. Join and serve your local Red Cross chapter now and enjoy knowing that your membership and your contributions are helping people when a need arises throughout the months ahead.